Hi guys, so today continuing with the Garden of Love collection from Crafters Companion Reviews, I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do our flower forming, but I'm going to do a, um, a barrette. So I haven't done one of these in a long time and I thought this is actually a really cute way to use it. And I did have a lot of questions from people or comments saying that, you know, maybe Garden of Love is more geared toward weddings and then I have a lot of weddings to do, but this is just another way to use it. So I thought this was going to be fun. So I do have... Well, first of all, thank you Crafters Companion for sending these for my review. These were sent free of charge to me, and of course all opinions are my own. So, um, we do have the metal dies here, the 3D layered daisy, and our 3D layered rose. And I might make them a little bit smaller, but, um, just so I can get them onto a barrette, but we'll see. So, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all three layers or how I'm going to use them. Um, really fun. And then, um, the kit, or the whole collection, but you can also buy these separately. Um, we have the, um flower forming foam and these really pretty colors. We have the white, we have like a green, we have like the pink. So I'm gonna use the rose and the pink color or blush, it's really pretty. And then I'm gonna do the little daisy in white and then I'm gonna try to do some leaves we'll see in green and uh, we'll see how that turns out. So since it's like five o'clock in the morning and everyone's still asleep, I don't wanna make a lot of noise with machines. So I'm gonna be using the Gemini Mini. I believe we can probably get them in here. It looks like it's white enough to cover every single flower that's in there, the dyes. So we have that. You're going to need some hot glue. Um, if you're going to make a barrette like I am, you're going to need some barrettes. So I do have um, different sizes to show you here. And these I think are just from, I think these are from Walmart, but you can find these at craft stores. But I'm going to use the larger one just to give myself some more area to put some flowers on. But they have larger ones than even this. And this is um, a 70 millimeter barrette. Uh, for your flowers, you can use your flower forming tools. I have mine here. I'm probably going to use that little purple finger. We'll see. Well, maybe not for the rose because I'm not going to squish it so much. So I'll probably just need my ball tools and I have some foam here that uh, came with the initial kit. I had bought the whole flower forming kit, so I have those. And then we have some um, uh, stamens. Um, this is from Vintage Lace Collection, but I have tons from other collections or other times I bought... Um, the uh, flower forming foam kits from Crafts Companion. So I'll probably use this pearl color and um, we'll see how that goes. But you don't have to use, I mean, if you have any kind of little flower scents, like these are a little bit big, we can take them apart so I can pick out just the ones that I would want. These are super cheap that I found not too long ago. Um, hot glue and then an iron, like a craft iron, some kind of iron. I have a little mini traveling iron I use, so I'll bring that out in just a minute. But what we need to do is go ahead and cut out our flowers. So I'm going to open up this package so it doesn't make a lot of noise here on camera and open up our dies and I will be right back. Okay, so we have our rose. And this is going to shrink down quite a bit, but not too, too much. I might make a full size rose and then just smaller daisies. I don't know. Um, but for now, let's just pop out our dies and then we're going to cut a few at a time. That way we can get this going. We are going to do several layers. This is just the pink strip of the front. I haven't even cut it or anything. It just seems like it's a good size to run through here. So I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And I'm going to layer these up. I'm trying to conserve. I think I can even pop the small one through too. And you can see if they shift. So that's why you can layer this up and be confident that they're not going to move because you're con you can kind of control it as you're putting this through. So I'm going to give it a little push. And here we go. I'm just holding it just to make sure they don't shift too much until we get to where we need to be. Perfect. So I'm going to continue cutting these guys out just the way you see. I'll do the same thing with the daisies. Um, I'll do, like I said, several layers. I think I'm just going to do one or two of the background. And um, when I come back, I'll tell you how many layers we ended up cutting. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm almost done. I just was cutting out my last daisy. The daisy, when you go to get it, it does stick a little bit in that foam because it's so dainty in that middle part. But it comes right out. You just have to kind of pull it. And then... Um, <laughs> Well, I mentioned I was on to do some leaves. For the leaves, I was thinking about just using this rose one. And I'll show you. This might seem odd, but hopefully this will work. I'm just going to pop out 
it doesn't really matter because we're not gonna use all of them so however you can get this on here even if it was a partial piece and get that going really well and on this last piece what I was going to do is just cut a little bit longer like towards the middle here and I think once we shrink it and do stuff it'll look a little more leafy but what I was planning on doing is just kind of cutting into it and making it a little more organic on the edges Just like that. And I'm going to cut a couple of those too. Okay, so we have mostly what we need. I'm going to plug in my, um, what's that thing called? Uh, my iron, and we will start flower forming. Okay, so this is a little mini travel iron I got from Amazon a long time ago. It's Sunbeam Brown. I think it was like $12, but I'm leaving it sitting up so you can see it better. So we can start with like our little leaves. Just put it on there, and look how fast that <laughs> reacts. Oh, I'm gonna use my nails. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do much to these because they're just leaves. Again, you can crunch them up. You can kind of form them a little bit. And just so they have a little organic shape. Okay, so I'll do that with the leaves. Not the biggest deal. Um, I'm gonna put those to the side right now. And then our flowers. So I'm gonna I have two large bases, one middle one, and three of the small centers. And we're just going to place that on there. And I guess it depends on how much you want this thing to wrinkle up, <laughs> right? So you saw how the little... And if I'm going to bend it backwards. You can manipulate them forward. I noticed too that the foam reacts more and more quickly recently the new the newer foams. Um, I don't know if it's any different, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> But I'm just going to manipulate them just like that. So there's like one. Here's another one. That was really fast. I'm just giving them some shape. Really, to me, I almost leave them the way they, whatever it does. Because <laughs> that's just fine. You can also heat up your tools a little bit if you want some warmth on your tool. And let that warmth help you kind of manipulate your flowers. So I'm going to do this for every layer, basically the same thing you see me doing right now. Just uh, here's the middle layer. I remove that one. That one did its own thing that was really cute, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Just going to kind of push it to the center. Look at that. <laughs> so cute. And I'm just going to keep working with them just like that. I'll be right back and then we'll do the um, the daisy. So I'll do all the different, <laughs> sticking to my hand, the different layers, just like what you saw. Push it down and then uh, I'll come back once all the rose pieces okay, are done. Rose, I'm probably not going to do the three center layers, because the smallest layers, because it's getting really full. So I'm just going to do two. So basically, it's two of each layer. Now you can do three, you can do whatever you like. It's just for the barrette, this is getting really kind of busy, so there's what that's going to look like. Oh, it keeps sticking my fingers. I get a lot of um, static electricity for some reason. But okay, so that's the rose. I'm going to put it to the side before we put it together. And then the daisies, I think I cut two outer layers, two of the middle, because I told you I wanted them a little bit smaller. And then I cut two um, uh, of the smallest, and um, one of the smallest layers, sorry. This one really curled up. We do not want it to be that curled up because then we can't see our little flower. So let's make sure we get the petals facing outward. Oh, this is like a perfect size. And they shrink down a lot, so it's kind of, you know, you want to imagine the finished size. So this is the middle layer of the daisy, so you can imagine the larger one. Let me just warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to do two middle layers and one of the smallest layer for the daisy. This thing curls up. <laughs> there we go. I guess it depends on which side you want to use. You can manipulate each one. Again, if you don't like what happens, you can put it back on your iron and manipulate it again. 
So I'm going to do one more bottom layer, which is the middle size for the daisies. Do my other daisy and we'll get this put together. Okay. So I'm going to use a pokey tool. That's one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning. Um, I don't, <laughs> of course, this is like really stuck on here. Let me get this thing off. Again, this is from Crafter's Companion, but you can use any pokey tool or something just to pierce with. And so we're going to start with these little center pieces. And I'm going to go right down the center as best as I can see it and poke that right through. So I want to make sure I have these in the right order. Okay. And we'll manipulate them in a little bit before we stick them down because you do want them kind of offset from each other. That way you're not always doing the same the petals exactly the same spot, right? You want to kind of give them some space. And I'm going to do this a little more difficult than I normally would <laughs> um, as far as, let's see, there we go. So even right now I can already just twist it and get the petals offset. Um, I'm going to stick the stamens here and there. Normally, for this one's a little bit tight, but we'll see if I can get it done. I am kind of getting in there really good, bringing it up to the stick part. And normally what I do with the stamens is like they're wrapped in a little piece of metal. And I use this little piece of metal to help me pull them into the flower. I've done it before many times. But we're going to make this really simple. So hopefully this works. And if it doesn't, I'll just go back to my old classic. I'm just going to cut this in half. And I'm going to try to stick it through the hole that we make which is totally different than what I normally do, I know. And maybe if I kind of go like this and put some glue, that might help get them all in there. But I'm just going to hold it tight. I'm going to put it down for a second. Well, no, I'm just going to hold on to it. Okay, so I'm going to open this up so I can see that center hole that we made. And then I'm going to try to shove this through that hole. And since this is soft, it's not going to be the easiest thing, so I'm going to finagle it, maybe push it through with this tool. Till I get them on the other side. It's not super thick, so it doesn't take a lot to get them to the other side. You just have to pull them through once they get there. So I can see the little strings in here. So I'm gonna keep working, trying to push these through. That one fell out, but I'll get them. I'll get them. And his little dog too. Okay, so I'm gonna keep pushing them through just like that. Okay, so they have just enough stiffness that you can kind of mess with them. Just keep pushing, pushing until you get it through. And once you can catch the other end of it, you can bring that through. Okay, and this is literally just, that's kind of cute. I kind of like the way they're different sizes. I'm going to leave it there for now. We're going to glue this down in just a minute. But for now, let's just put this to the side and look at our pretty little rows. Okay, same thing for these guys. I'm just going to get the middle section. Hope these are all lined up about right. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to grab three of these, two or three of them. And they can probably go one at a time. I don't know why I'm trying to force all three at once, but let's drill that little hole. And this time I can kind of see. Part of the problem is I need new glasses, so I'm just like working on these so that one I was able to place it in there real easily. Because it has less layers, so it's easier to see what we're doing. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for the other daisy. Just get those little stamens in the middle. And I'm going to heat up my um, glue gun so we're ready to put this onto our barrette. Okay, while the glue's warming up, we're going to prepare our um, barrette. So you need uh, a little piece of ribbon. Did I mention the ribbon at the beginning? I forgot. I might have forgotten. This is, um, I think it's 3 8 inch ribbon or 9 millimeter ribbon. And you need about 6 and a half inches of it, enough to cover your barrette. So what I usually normally do is I take it completely apart so we pop this part out too. And I will... Put our ribbon on here just like this all the way around just to cover it to make it look nice to begin with okay so that's all we're gonna do i think this is warmed up enough maybe you have to work kind of quickly because this is going to go against cold metal and it uh, wants to firm up pretty quickly right so i put a piece here i glue it down this whole top 
and then I kind of you got to string this part through this area I don't know if you can see there's like a little clippy there you can't really just open that up so you want to get this through there and that kind of holds it down but nice and taut and then some more glue to the end here and you could always um, seal the ends of your ribbon with uh, what's that called with a little flame like this so I usually keep this here for that reason it's usually my ribbon making my ribbon making <laughs> uh, lighter there and then that's it. You can do that at the beginning. You don't have to <laughs> the way I did it. I'm just like, it's not overly complicated there. Okay. So then we have to put this guy, these guys back in. So you can put this in here now or after you put the other part. But either way, this guy stays here. And then this guy has to go back in. And he has a bow to it. And, of course, it bends in. So, um... You find your little area that needs to clip in here and get that back in. You don't have to do it now, you can do it after you're done. It's easier to do it now so you can handle it instead of having the flowers on there. Oh, come on. Usually I just give it a push and it wants to clip in, but now of course, there we go. Okay. So as you can see, it's bowed out, so that way when it clips, it clips. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna put our flowers on. Like I said earlier, we can um, attach this. I'm gonna glue it down now, but if you wanted to seal this up or make it look really nice, what you can do is take your leftover pink and cut yourself like a little circle. Like, let's say, I'm not gonna use it, but let's say on the back of our white one, just cut yourself a little circle or something that you can then use on the back here. Put some glue and then seal this down so it's uh, sealed a little nicer. But I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to glue it down. I'm probably going to cut a little bit of this excess. So on the, this one too, you can just get some of that pink and just stick it on the back. Just so it coordinates better. Um, but what I'm going to do is put a mass of glue. I'm going to do the center one first because I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put this. And I'm going to get my little flower going. So that way I know it's catching the stamens, it's catching the flower. We're going to stick that down real well. And of course at this point you would have manipulated your flower. That way you can still kind of make sure your layers are where you want them. So cute. I can tell this is going to be pretty already. Now, there's other types of clips. You don't have to put on this. You can put on one of those little alligator clips like I usually do for Miranda. But um, I think this is cute. I'm going to put the leaves in at the end because I don't know where I want my leaves. So I'm just going to put, again, a big glob of glue here. Oh, that's so cute. And then I'll probably manipulate so the roses on top when we're done here, but that's okay for now. So I'm gonna hold these down until they dry so I can come in with the uh, leaves because I'm gonna have to kind of manipulate this so I can get the leaves tucked under. Okay, so I was just kind of manipulating my rose so that the roses on top of the daisies, but they're right next to each other really. So with the leaves, all I'm gonna do is find a spot where I think I can get glue and where I can shove the leaf in. So you can use your pokey tool to help you or however you want, but you could have done those first. I just wanted to know where everything else is gonna be. Oopsie, I'm running out of glue, here we go. So I'm gonna make sure my rose is tucked out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing, okay. So I wanna make sure I'm still in frame. So I'm putting a little glop of glue there. I'm gonna take this guy and get it right into there. And pull him wherever I want it. So I'm gonna manipulate it before it dries up. A lot of these things, if you didn't like where you left your flower, you can always just come back and kind of like pick it up and do it again. But be very careful because it's foam. So 
but it's just barely sticking out there. I don't know how many leaves I want to do. I was going to do one there and one down here. And I think that'll be plenty. And there's plenty of room in this one. For me to open this up. That's cute. Maybe I'll do another one. I do have plenty so I can put them on the edge, but that's fine. It's just a little detail. So I'm just going to put that there. I'm going to let this dry up. Oh, sorry. Hopefully I was in frame and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I think we're all done. I just added a second leaf in the same areas. I just shoved another leaf in there because just for a little something more. But look at that. Really cute. Different way to use these things. You can make yourself a little um, barrette or for your child or whoever. Nice and neat looking on both sides. I have a petal tucked back here. Let me pull that out there. Really pretty. I love this rose and the daisies are really fun accent to it. Um, so I really like this set together. Very easy to work with. You guys have seen me do these before. It's always magic. It's always fun. I'll have some pictures for you guys. Uh, thank you so much Crafters Companion for sending these to my review. And keep an eye out for the other reviews I've done and the ones I will continue to do on this large, awesome Garden of Love collection. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.